Look at this. It's the temporary labor market in Guangzhou. These days, more and more people are coming out to look for jobs. But no matter how hard you look, you just can't see any employers hiring. Thousands of temporary workers are searching for jobs, and most of them are getting anxious. For those without skills, finding a job will only get harder. For one position, there are over a dozen people competing. There's even a man by the roadside who couldn't find a job. So he's just sleeping here in the temporary labor place. He says he searched for an hour and still couldn't find a job. So he had no choice but to return to his rented room to rest. The job market really isn't good right now. Many factories have started operating again, but they're not hiring. Many people can't find work, and they're feeling helpless and lost. The man admits he's feeling lost too. He doesn't know where to look for work. So for now, he's just taking it one step at a time. This is a real-life scene of a recruitment drive at a factory. Yo, what is that? We don't hire those with tattoos, body piercings, or dental braces. Those who have worked at companies like OPP, Ovivo, or Xiao Tian Tai, or those who resigned within the last two months, who left voluntarily, dismissed, or fired. We don't want anyone over 33 years old. Only those born after the 1990s. People revealed that not only are the job recruitments stringent now, but also in big cities like Guangdong, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Shanghai, there are fewer and fewer factories recruiting workers. This is an industrial park in Guangzhou, which can almost be described as desolate and sparsely populated. It's rare to see people coming here looking for work. And factories hiring workers are nowhere to be seen. Even when there are job listings, they are mostly posted by agencies, and the salary and benefits are very low. No wonder young people are reluctant to work there. The situation is similar to Shanghai. Don't bother coming to Shanghai for work anymore. I used to welcome everyone to come to Shanghai for employment. But honestly, you can't find a job in Shanghai right now. It's harder to find a job than a partner, especially for those without specific skills. Many factories in Shanghai are already fully staffed, and others have no work available. If you can't find a job in Shanghai and stay for seven or eight days, the expenses can be really high. Even before earning any salary, you have to spend a significant amount of money. I've been in Shanghai for a whole decade, and I can tell you that most of the slightly better factories in Shanghai have already filled their positions. The remaining factories either offer low wages or have difficult work. Most people leave after working for just a day or two, at most three to five days. The man also mentioned that high-paying jobs are rarely seen now. The real wages for ordinary workers in the Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Shanghai region. Are at most five to six thousand yuan. Those who can earn five to six thousand yuan a month in their hometowns shouldn't consider coming out to find work. Moreover, it's best for people over the age of forty-five not to come out. In the Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Shanghai region, it's very difficult for older ordinary workers to find employment. Shenzhen is facing a similar situation. Now that we're already in March. There are usually many workers who go out to find jobs, but many of them still haven't found employment. You might find it strange because Shenzhen has so many factories. So, is it really that hard to find work? The video was shot in the Xitian Industrial Zone in Shenzhen. It's quite strange because there used to be a lot of factories here, especially small hardware factories. But now, all these factories have moved out, leaving the place deserted. The gates of the industrial zone are closed, and there's not a single person in the factory area. A few years ago, the surroundings of these factories were bustling with activity, but now it's so desolate. This is indeed a concern for many workers. Once the factories move out, those without education, skills, or other advantages will face even greater pressure. 
。这就奇怪了，人到底都去哪里了 ？Due to the gradual decrease in the migrant worker population, commercial activities around Shenzhen industrial parks also seem desolate. 不过虽然今天是星期天 ，Today is Sunday. I came out to stroll around in the outdoor markets. But it feels like there are hardly any people around. These shops all seem so deserted. Here is the market in the village. There are not many people either. This is the store in the village, and this area is where the stalls are set up. The left side used to be filled with stalls, but now it has become a parking lot. 感觉现在比过年之前的人都还要少 The foot traffic now is even less than before Chinese New Year. This area. Mainly sells late-night snacks. It used to be bustling, but now the foot traffic is getting less and less. Today's business is exceptionally poor. I don't know why. Another person captured a rare scene at Dongguan Railway Station in Guangdong. Dongguan Railway Station should have been bustling with crowds after Chinese New Year, but still only have a few scattered people walking around its vicinity. Many businesses or shops near Dongguan Railway Station have either closed down or withdrawn their investments, indicating the weakness of the Guangdong economy. Some people speculated that perhaps there aren't many good job opportunities in the area, and the competitive employment environment discourages people from coming here to seek work. Some people are even planning to leave. Hi, 大家好 Hi, everyone. I went around an industrial park again this afternoon. But I didn't see any suitable jobs. It's really difficult to find work now. This factory specializes in making robots, but there are no job postings. Many factory entrances don't have any recruitment information displayed. The man walked for a while and came across a factory recruiting junior technicians, offering a salary of five thousand to seven thousand yuan. However, he believed that working here would probably only earn him a little over five thousand yuan. Another workplace claimed to offer high-paying jobs with long day hours and one day off every seven days, but the specific details were unclear. The man explained that working in an automobile parts factory is quite tiring compared to an electronics factory. With the upgrade of industrial intelligence, the demand for manual labor jobs is gradually decreasing, leading to factories reducing recruitment after Chinese New Year. Last year, some people complained about the difficulty of finding easy jobs. But this year, it seems that even those difficult jobs are hard to come by. Some large-scale companies have begun to reduce their recruitment, while small-scale businesses have stopped recruiting altogether. A person posted information on an online platform. As of March fifth, eighty percent of the factories in Chongqing are currently full and have suspended recruitment. Subsequently. The authorities denied it. However, some people confirmed that recruitment has indeed been halted. The factories in Chongqing are basically paralyzed, with 70% of businesses having stopped recruiting, and the remaining 30% having raised the minimum age for recruitment to over 22 years old. Everyone, the latest notice from Guangda Chongqing Co Ltd. Has raised the minimum age from 16 to over 18. I suggest friends around 16 years old don't come here during this time, as factories are basically not hiring, and coming here would just be a waste of transportation expenses. Although job scarcity is already a common topic nowadays, why did the news about the recruitment situation in Chongqing factories spread so quickly on the internet and catch everyone's attention? On the Chinese financial forum Fortune China, software engineer with the username Hua Shen highlighted the unique position of Chongqing compared to other markets. This is because Chongqing is home to a diverse and well-known Chinese companies, including OPPO Mobile, Chang'an Automobile, Sears, BAIC Group, BOE Technology, Vivo Mobile, Mita Air Conditioning, and many others. These companies are basically the highest performing companies in the current Chinese market. If they all suspend recruitment, then it's even more difficult for other small and medium-sized enterprises. Although this rumor has now been refuted, its spread reflects the current concern of job scarcity. In recent years, Chongqing's manufacturing industry has indeed encountered some problems. For example, 
Taiwanese Fortune 500 corporation Quanta Computer is set to have poor recruitment, and there are even rumors that they may relocate. Foxconn in Chongqing is also facing difficulties, with the factory's revenue seemingly starting to decline. Even some companies with relatively easy working environments, such as Chongqing's Compal Electronics, are transitioning to the automotive parts production field. Recently, large-scale labor unrest broke out in Chongqing, with nearly 20,000 workers participating. Surprisingly, this labor unrest occurred in the largest nucleic acid regent factory in the country. The workers' anger stemmed from the local government's decision to stop mass PCR testing, resulting in a sudden sharp decrease in factory orders. Despite earning substantial profits, the factory owners were unwilling to continue providing support to these workers without compensation, so they forcibly laid off most of them, sparking this intense labor unrest. Some people warned that those with jobs should not resign easily now, as it's very difficult to find suitable employment again. Moreover, the criteria for factory jobs are becoming increasingly stringent. The market situation for manufacturing this year is indeed not optimistic. Recruitment is low, even during the traditionally bustling periods for recruitment, such as after the Chinese New Year. Many major factories have gradually stopped recruiting and some factories haven't hired anyone since the beginning of the year. This situation has caused difficulties for some out-of-town people looking for work. Those who originally intended to return to their hometowns found that factories there were no longer hiring. Job opportunities in other regions are also not as promising as they had expected, with low wages, minimal demand, and even their previous workplace has stopped recruitment. The economic downturn in China has led to a severe employment situation, leaving many unable to afford mortgage payments. Additionally, with the significant drop in housing prices and slow real estate market, it has led to widespread unemployment and financial hardship. Many are unable to repay mortgages, resulting in widespread defaults and even people facing existential crisis. Meanwhile, Chinese companies are facing reduced business volume due to tense trade relations adding to the employment pressure. At the beginning of this year, the Chinese stock market plummeted, worsening concerns that deflation could become a norm, subsequently leading to historically low consumer confidence. Regarding job hunting, many people have complained after the Chinese New Year that they can't find a job and are very worried. This is especially the case among construction workers who are said to top the unemployment list this year. Many said there's been no work, and they can only stay at home. Many companies require high education levels but offer low wages. Some people complain that companies require employees to do everything, including cleaning, but only pay 3,000 yuan, making it difficult for job seekers to accept. A resident of Fu Yun, Guangdong, said she used to work in a factory but was indirectly laid off. She has not found any ideal jobs now, and the wages are very low. A resident of Changsha, who has been unemployed for two years, said he used to be a teacher at a training institution, but government policies prohibiting educational training led to teachers losing their jobs, and now he can only rely on savings to live. 41-year-old Zhang Zhaolin used to work in online live streaming. Earlier this year, she and dozens of other employees were laid off together. She said her family needs to pay a mortgage of 30,000 yuan per month, so she has to cut all unnecessary expenses. Zhang has some savings, but she is not confident about finding a job with equivalent pay in the short term. Moreover, she's not even sure if she can find a new job. For middle-class families like Zhang, enrolling children in various extracurricular activities used to be taken for granted. However, due to economic concerns, spending on activities such as soccer, swimming, piano, and dance has been greatly reduced, similar to many other middle-class families. Some residents of Jiangsu revealed that the current employment problem in China is very severe, with even medical PhD graduates finding it difficult to find jobs, whereas compared to the past, medical PhD graduates could easily enter the best hospitals. It's even more difficult for ordinary people.
in the part-time job market in Anhui. About 15 men are already waiting for job opportunities as early as 7 o'clock in the morning. 43-year-old Sun Shui Dong is good at laying tiles and can also do painting and construction work. He told Deutsche Welle reporters that it is now very difficult to find work, especially in this year. There are fewer and fewer people coming to recruit workers. The work is also more difficult than before. Employers also look for faults and try to pay as little as possible. A 65-year-old man waiting for work said he rides a tricycle to find delivery work here every day in addition to his inadequate national's pension. It is now very difficult to earn money, and this income is barely enough to support his family. There is no way to save up any money. During the off-season, he can only work for one to two hours a day. The restaurant industry is also facing difficulties. Since 2024, many owners have complained about the difficulty of business. A noodle shop owner in Chongqing admitted that since September last year, business has been consistently dismal, and the overall market and consumption level seems to be declining. For example, his restaurant is located in Chongqing's Hongyadong Business District, which is a hub for dining. It used to be bustling during the Chinese New Year, but this year it's unusually deserted, leaving him wondering where everyone has gone. In addition, the owner of Li Junli Barbecue in Zhengzhou, Henan, lamented on his social media that the entire food street on Wenbo Road has deteriorated, accompanied by six photos as evidence. Not only in Zhengzhou's Wenbo Road, but also in other areas like the Wukuang Live Plaza in Changsha's Kaifu District, the trendy food street near Chongqing's Guangyin Chao and night market in Guangzhou dining hotspots have all been experiencing a gradual decline. In 2024, many restaurant owners are feeling a mix of emotions. After a year of hardships and toil, they had hoped for some rewards in the new year, but it seems that this wish may be hard to achieve. Following the conclusion of CCP's recent two sessions, people have a clear understanding that the party has not prioritized addressing livelihood issues. Faced with the continued deterioration of the Chinese economy, the CCP seems to lack a clear plan or willingness to stimulate economic recovery. Moreover, the two sessions did not provide clear solutions to deepening crises such as the Chinese real estate crisis, trillions of dollars in local government debt, low consumer demand, soaring youth unemployment, loss of business and consumer confidence, and rapid aging. In a government work report, Premier Li Chang prioritized establishing a so-called modern industrial system for the first time. He introduced a new term, new quality productivity, and calls for invigorating China through science and education, and thirdly, emphasized expanding domestic demand. However, analysts believe that the new industries promoted cannot support the job market. According to Goldman Sachs' analysis in 2023, China is actively developing emerging industries such as electronic vehicles, lithium-ion batteries, and renewable energy. But these industries currently account for only about 3.5% of China's GDP. In contrast, the traditional real estate industry occupies a much greater share, about one-fourth of GDP. Although the Chinese government is promoting the development of emerging industries, the scale of these three major industries is still small and cannot completely replace the important position of real estate in the economy. Moreover, these emerging industries are not sufficient to create enough job opportunities for millions of university graduates and migrant workers currently facing difficulties in their lives. Recently, a well-known photovoltaic Douyin account, Tsege Talks Photovoltics, revealed insider information. It is said that a leading photovoltaic company in China plans to lay off 30% of its workforce, involving about 18,000 employees. It is worth noting that this round of layoffs is no longer limited to fresh graduates, interns, and contractors, but has reached the functional departments. In the past six months, the company has already laid off nearly half of its employees. Although he did not explicitly point out which photovoltaic company will have this large-scale layoff, 
Judging from the figures of a 30% layoff involving 18,000 people, the scale of this company may exceed 16,000 people and would be a leader in the industry. Currently, with the overall price decline in the photovoltaic industry chain, the industry is on the verge of losses. So, it is not surprising that photovoltaic companies are laying off employees. In stark contrast to the rapid development of the photovoltaic industry chain in 2022, the current market has undergone significant changes. The Wall Street Journal pointed out that due to the wasteful spending of local governments over the past decade, the CCP government faces fiscal constraints, and the potential growth rate has significantly declined. Since the mid-2010s, when the labor force reached its peak, the downward trend in the economic growth has been particularly evident. Recent studies have also revealed that the Chinese economy may be below its potential growth level. In terms of fiscal policy, the official national budget deficit is 3% of GDP, and considering the planned insurance of special government bonds, the deficit will reach 3.8% unchanged from last year. Nevertheless, some indicators show that Chinese monetary policy remains very high, with current inflation rates at around zero. The inflation target for 2024 is 3%, and the economic growth target remains unchanged from last year. This is noteworthy. Most of China's actual fiscal expenditure is carried out by local governments and state-owned policy banks, which is separate from the budgets. Financing may be troubled if interest rates are not lowered, especially as the CCP aims to avoid crowding out the already weak private investments. Li Chiang hinted at more flexibility on interest rates, suggesting that the growth of the money supply should align with growth and inflation targets. However, he also called for exchange rate stability, emphasizing in his opening remarks last year's avoidance of mass stimulus policies. The National Bureau of Statistics delayed the release of the Purchasing Managers Index, measuring economic vitality until March 1st. It shows that China's manufacturing PMI fell from 49.2 in January to 49.1 in February. This is the fifth consecutive month that the manufacturing PMI has been below the critical point since September 2023, indicating a contraction. In addition to manufacturing, related indicators for the construction and service industries are also at recent lows. Columnist Shu Li Ren pointed out that the economic objectives of the Chinese government are increasingly detached from reality, indicating a growing alienation between the CCP and the people. Premier Li Chang announced a 2024 Chinese economic growth target of around 5%, the same as in 2023. However, in 2023, Beijing had just phased out its COVID-0 policy and experienced a brief period of economic stimulus, which is unlikely to reoccur in 2024. Investors have realized that even extensive stimulus cannot yield the same effects on the Chinese economy anymore. Massive fixed asset investments from the past have led to diminishing returns and accumulated substantial debt, and now these issues are affecting the economy.